Hi everyone and welcome to today's third session. We know that you're probably exhausted by this time, but it's a very, very interesting and very important session, especially if you're looking into becoming a drilling engineer. So today's session is about dr uh, directional drilling and we have an expert for you. So gear up for the ride. And let me introduce our uh, presenter or our lecturer for the day. Uh, our lecturer for the day is Engineer uh, Ahmad Osman. Engineer Ahmad Osman has graduated from American University in Cairo with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. He is currently the drilling engineer manager for Schlumberger for Saudi Arabia and Bahrain region. Uh, Ahmad has uh, several inter internal awards and external publication on the advanced directional drilling systems and different applications. Ahmad has been working for Schlumberger for over 18 years. He started as a field engineer for drilling, measurement, drilling and measurements, DNM, product line in Venezuela, Egypt, Algeria, Jordan, and Sudan. He then uh, pro uh, progressed to manage different drilling engineering projects in Egypt, Sudan, Vietnam, Thailand, Myanmar, Saudi, and Kuwait for different big operators such as BP, Shell, ENI, Apache, Petronas, and Saudi Aramco. He is experienced in a wide range of special projects such as deep water, HPHC, and ERD operations. Ahmad has participated in a number of SP conferences, technology seminars, and drilling training courses during the, the course of his career, where he uh, interacted with different drilling groups in the oil field in industry. So you probably can tell from his resume that he's heavily experienced in lots of things. So please pay attention. Always leave your um, questions in the Q&A part and the chat in the chat part. I'll be looking in the, into the chat part, but not as frequent as the Q&A. And also please keep the chat area very professional. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Ahmad, uh, over to you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, um, everyone. Uh, thank you, Nihal, and uh, thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for uh, giving the opportunity and inviting me for um, uh, for this uh, session. Um, it's definitely um, uh, very encouraging, and uh, it's always good to um, uh, to address your audience. and um, And I thank you for this. Um, so, without uh, really getting or uh, further ado, I'll, um, I'll I'll get into the topic that uh, we are gathering around today, and it's definitely very uh, very um, uh, very close to my heart. I've uh, been working on this uh, for around uh, 18 years now, so uh, um, I'll try to make it as simple as possible and as well give you a, a, a more or less a lot of the industry um, uh, feel on it, on, on the main concepts of, of direction drilling and the technologies as well and, uh, and overall processes uh, that ensures the success of, of these different operations. All right, so I'll, I'll go forward on the agenda. Um, uh, as a start, uh, as, we, as we mentioned, I'll, I'll try to make it into um, uh, three main parts, uh, one covering the concepts and uh, then one covering the technologies and, um, uh, and finally the processes. And with this, I'll, I'll go through the um, first, uh, why are we doing direction drilling in the oil industry and uh, for, uh, for oil field uh, wells? Uh, then I'll go through the well planning uh, part and the well trajectory uh, part, uh, differentiating the directional uh, wells from the vertical wells. And how would we uh, go uh, by for a well board surveying these wells and understanding the position of them uh, to address and uh, intercept the required targets. Um, then I'll, I'll talk, get a little bit more in depth on uh, how we do the direction drilling um, uh, with the different technologies that are associated with it uh, on the bottom hole assemblies. Uh, then finally, I'll, I'll close out with the operation cycle uh, processes and, um, and uh, how we are enabling with the digital enablements and the real-time enablements and all the um, uh, technology and um, uh, communication technologies we are able uh, to deliver this uh, from uh, remotely as well. All right, so I'll, um, hopefully I'll embark on this for, uh, for the coming hours. So definitely, as, uh, as Nihal said, um, very welcoming any questions that uh, that you would have uh, by the end of the session. Uh, all right, so um, uh, to start up, um, um, uh, basically um, direction drilling has been uh, there since uh, around the 60s where uh, people started looking at uh, moving away from vertical wells uh, that would have um, uh, minimal reservoir contact into probably more directional wells 
that would serve different purposes. Uh, some of them would be either you are trying to sidetrack out of um, uh, out of uh, a well due to um, uh, well bore problems or due to uh, uh, casing problems or downhole environment problems. Uh, other cases would be um, in intercepting targets that are away from the surface location or the area that you are drilling from, like uh, drilling under uh, underneath of um, uh, yeah. yeah underneath of, um, uh, of cities, uh, as well uh, accessing some targets that are, um, that are not accessible drilling vertically, such as uh, drilling through or below sole domes or trying to avoid sole domes that, uh, that would have their own uh, directional or drilling challenges uh, drilling through them, as well as uh, uh, trying to, uh, uh, to get away from uh, some fault controlling uh, entities. Also, there are other applications like uh, relief well drilling. So um, uh, these are examples where you have a, a, a relief well that is required to intercept a uh, blowout well, or drilling out of platforms like the offshore drilling, where you are trying to intercept multiple uh, targets from one platform location um, and to, to reduce your um, move costs and uh, reduce your installation costs, uh, as well as uh, increasing the drainage of, of reservoirs. Instead of drilling with a vertical well, you're trying to drill it um, horizontal wells. Uh, and as well, uh, potentially multilaterals, uh, whereas you are trying to make multiple um, exits from one single well into multiple reservoirs and targets, again, reducing the overall cost of the well. So different, a lot of, uh, definitely a lot of applications. A lot of them uh, have specific applications like relief wells or site tracking, and others are looking at uh, cost optimizations, and others definitely are looking at the footage uh, or um, uh, cost per foot and reducing, increasing the drainage and reduce, uh, reducing the overall cost of the well. So definitely a lot of applications that are there, and, um, and this is where the industry started looking at uh, that uh, vertical wells uh, would not always serve uh, the requirement of uh, cost uh, benefit or uh, or productivity benefits, and and then uh, it required that uh, that uh, that there are definitely needs uh, for directional wells, and these would uh, as you would be seeing could vary from uh, a deviated well, uh, sometimes S-shaped wells, uh, or as well horizontal wells. Uh, so these are different profiles that we have been uh, definitely seeing uh, in the in the direction. All right, so, so these are more or less applications that, uh, that uh, have all started the, the need for the direction drilling. But, but then once we start uh, looking at uh, the need for, uh, once we start looking at planning one of, the, of these direction wells, um, uh, you can totally imagine if, if we need to start um, going from a vertical wells to some other deviated wells, then the terminologies would start and you will be starting to look at different other ter terminologies um, to, to describe uh, how the well path has been moving. Um, and this is where you start looking at the uh, surface location, terminologies like surface locations and, um, and, a, and a depth on, of the well where you have a kickoff point, which is a change of the inclination or the change of the deviation of the well, and as well target locations um, uh, associated with it. Try to close this one. All right. Um, and you start looking at terminologies like how much of vertical section or uh, or horizontal displacement that you need to move out from your uh, your surface locations to hit um, any of the target locations that you are um, you are looking for. So these are definitely all terminologies that came out uh, about once you started looking at uh, at uh, uh, direction wells uh, from moving away from vertical wells. All right. So uh, so again. Uh, with this comes the need of of now being from away from a vertical well is to um, is to identify and define the path of the different well bores that we need to uh, to drill, whether as we mentioned being deviated wells or horizontal wells, and uh, and then you you start looking at uh, at what we call as a well bore surveying to understand uh, where the start of the well goes and then how you can define the different path and the different points uh, of the well itself as you go to the required target locations. And, and here you start looking at the northing and easting of every single point of the well and plotting it uh, to, uh, to reach um, at the point of space that uh, you are trying to get into from, from your uh, surface location. All right, so, so eventually what you, uh, what you would be ending up as uh, once you start planning direction wells, you would be ending up looking at well plans that would have a kickoff point uh, at some specific depth then um, a curve that you want to build uh, to get to a specific inclination, 
uh, with within specific direction, then you might be looking at increasing this inclination to some specific uh, figure until, for example, this particular example that we are looking at is to get to a horizontal well. And during this different uh, uh, path uh, of the well, there is different technologies that you need to be looking at and, uh, and the risks that you will be encountering as you are moving from, uh, from verticality to, um, to curve section and then even drilling a, 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 a horizontal section. And during the early stages, it was always the, sometimes um, uh, for people difficult to imagine how a steel and, uh, and drill pipe can actually make all of this um, deviations and, uh, and, um, and, um, and move from being a vertical or being stiff as you know, steel to, uh, to this um, uh, limberness and getting into these words. But, uh, but uh, I always used to imagine this as, um, as a, a long hair, a piece of, uh, if you have uh, somebody has some long hair, and you see that the um, uh, hair itself is, uh, is uh, on its own as a material is probably uh, stiff. But, uh, but the fact that, um, uh, that the length to, to wet ratio is, um, is, uh, is very big, then you start uh, getting the effect of the limberness and, uh, and elasticity that can make the steel across these curvatures um, give you the, uh, the direction behavior that you require. And, and definitely, this is one of the examples where you plan a well that goes in one specific direction, drilling into horizontal, and then you can uh, look at uh, having some side tracks out of it to increase the drainage into some other, uh, uh, some other uh, reservoir exposures. So this is, uh, this is uh, these are just getting you on board on um, how we have been moving away from, from vertical wells and the reasons moving from vertical wells into more of uh, well planning of, of different shapes of wells. Uh, that, uh, that serve purpose of definitely eventually the purpose is to reduce the overall uh, cost per barrel uh, as we are uh, producing these uh, these wells and and the main purpose here would be increasing the exposure uh, out of one uh, the, the reservoir exposure out of one well all right but uh, but but then look at it uh, also from the, this perspective is that in um, um, uh, that yes you can also be drilling uh, some vertical wells but as well, at the same time, once you start getting into these deviation, deviated wells, um, so you, you have, this is a couple of examples that I wanted to show you that how much of deviated wells you can actually be looking at. And uh, these are, for example, you have some vertical wells in this uh, particular scenario, and then you have a, a pad. Uh, this was actually a, a land pad where you can have these multiple number of wells coming as a 50 wells, all coming from one pad into different areas of the reservoir, all exposing uh, different reservoirs uh, intervals. And, and again, all the economics uh, work out uh, with this, that, um, that it can deliver uh, what is required um, uh, while drilling uh, these wells for the reservoir exposure itself. And with this, this is what brings it as well, that the surveying and understanding the surveying and the well path that we are drilling it will be very critical to avoid any interception of these uh, wells uh, compared to each other and ensuring that you deliver it uh, safely without uh, having risks of, uh, of any anti-collision between different wells. This is what, what brings it that the, the surveying of, of wells and understanding the well path is one of, uh, it requires to be to the accuracy of a 0.1 degree in terms of inclination and uh, probably a 0.5 degrees in terms of azimuth to ensure that uh, no interception between uh, wells occur. Okay, so I wanted to give you a bit of uh, the, uh, the out, what is out there that, uh, that uh, the direction wells have moved into uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, infill, uh, infill drilling and having uh, uh, close correlations and close uh, spacings between uh, wells uh, uh, in a small vicinity of, of, of a field. All right. Okay, so now how, how, how do we do this now? Uh, so how, how do we move on and, uh, and we ensure that we can do directionally drill uh, wells as we require them and to the directions and, uh, and paths that we, uh, that we want to end up into? And, uh, and normally I, um, I uh, uh, imitate this or uh, I uh, represent this and when you go driving or maybe when, uh, when pilots go uh, driving an aeroplane or, uh, or drivers go and drive a car and, and Normally, you would, uh, if you are drilling in a straight line, I mean, this is what normally vertical drilling goes. 
but once you start looking at directional uh, directional wells, this is where you uh, you need to have some sort of a steering mechanism that um, that you want to uh, to be able to steer as the road goes and as you want to be uh, heading. You want to have some sort of uh, proper steering mechanism in in the hole that you are able to um, uh, to steer the well to the directions. And as well, you need a driver or you need eyes to see that you are actually following these um, uh, the path of this well. Yeah. So uh, so this is how you uh, uh, how you go about steering uh, at surface or uh, on roads. And this is more or less uh, what you do as well uh, in in ground or uh, or downhole. Um, and definitely, we need to may be aware of cases where you are steering out of the road, and this is where you need to stop and to know where you are uh, getting in undesired locations or undesired um, intervals. So the correlations are very similar, is that uh, you need to look at some steering mechanisms that, uh, that you are able to, uh, to steer the wells, and you need to have some measurements at the same time that would tell you that you are following the path that you have been planning from, uh, from, uh, from the beginning. All right, and this is where we, we start looking at the, what we call in the industry um, uh, directional or oil field industry, uh, we call it as the uh, surveying or well bore surveying. And well bore surveying is, is mostly understanding that where you are drilling from, so you will be drilling some, uh, from one specific um, uh, surface location. And then you, you want to understand as you are drilling how your path of the well is following the trajectory that you want. And, uh, and these would come, uh, as we say, with three main measurements that are very important are, and are the basis of understanding your well path, which we call them the depth of the drill string. As you are drilling deeper, you know your depth of, uh, of your drill string. And you know your inclination as the first path, which is the inclination of the well as you are drilling. And this is where you are getting these measurements from very specialized tools, which we call them the measurements while drilling tools. And these would have accelerometers to actually tell you that you are uh, what inclination you are getting into. And as well, you need to know the azimuth or the direction that you are moving towards. And this comes from what we call also from the direction and inclination uh, sensors inside the measurement tools, which would tell you the inclination based on accelerometers and would tell you the azimuth that you are heading towards uh, based on the magnetometers. Um, definitely the accelerometers would mostly look at uh, gravitational field from the earth and it would know that uh, as you are increasing your inclination of the well your vector of uh, of gravity would be changing and your three accelerometers inside the measurement tools would tell you that your uh, your inclination or your uh, your vertical uh, 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 gravity forces are changing and at the same time, when you go to the, when you have your magnetometers, you can relate your magnetometers to the direction that you are going towards based on the magnetic field of Earth. So these are the two main measurements that you look at: is the gravity force from Earth, and the, as you are increasing inclination, you would, you would, uh, the type of sensors inside would, uh, would, would differ in readings that you can interpret at surface and tell. Uh, yourself that uh, that your inclination has been changing uh, with that much and then your magnetometers readings would as well tell you uh, based on the magnetic field that you are measuring is is um, is uh, uh, the azimuth changes and uh, and the magnetic field reading the differences that you are getting so this is how we um, we we mostly specify our surveying okay these are the three main measurements that we as as we are drilling down uh, down the well we need to start taking these surveys and putting them together to 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 draw our well path Fine, so what we're saying is that on uh, every specific point as we are drilling, we are getting these surveys on a specific intervals. Normally the industry looks at around 90 to 100 feet of, um, of spacing between these surveys. And then after you get these surveys on, on a specific intervals, uh, we have a mechanism or the industry has what we call it as um, a 3D minimum curvature, which is a mathematical calculation uh, method of connecting these surveying points to give you from an MD, uh, an MD or, uh, or a depth inclination azimuth into a TVD and uh, north, thing, south, north, south, east, west, uh, north thing, uh, and east thing. Yeah? So it, it, it eventually gives you from the dif uh, uh, different measurements uh, of the surveys along the path, it, would, uh, it can uh, make the mathematics of giving this or, or, or correlating this afterwards to a TVD, north, south, east, west, on your uh, projections on the map itself uh, that, you are, uh, uh, that you are using, depending on the area that you are on. 
All right. So, so this is um, uh, this is basically how we do the surveys, and then these are your eyes that uh, that you uh, that you see with uh, while drilling to tell you that you're actually following or you are not following the the, the well plan that you are uh, heading towards, or you are trying to fulfill. All right. So, so let's look at this from a um, uh, conceptual point of view. So, any drill string as you are drilling, you would uh, mostly expect to have some sort of an MWD tool inside the hole, and you have some sort of a steering uh, mechanism or a steering uh, 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 device in the hole, let's say uh, being a motor at this stage, and definitely you have the bit, and this is all connected to, um, to your uh, uh, drill string. Drill string, by the way, can, uh, can be a uh, drill pipe, can be um, uh, in specific cases casing, it can be as well uh, coil tubing. So there are some special, uh, special um, applications where you can also have casing as your driving mechanism or, or drill string, sort of drill string, or even coil tubing. All right. So, uh, and definitely all of these tools, the objective from them at, in the hole is to send you measurements surface to the surface that you can interpret uh, being from the MWD, uh, different data from the motor uh, behavior. You have surface data, you have downhole data, and all of this at surface, you can interpret it to understand where exactly your well path uh, is going towards, right? So, so looking at this, the next thing that comes into mind is that um, uh, is that you need to make sure that these measurements are coming up to uh, to surface, and we know that this is all uh, mostly steel that is coming up to surface. Then, would, uh, uh, what is the mechanism? So, the industry, the major uh, way of uh, of uh, of revealing this data to surface, as per the industry. There are definitely now new techniques that are coming up uh, electrical, but I'll talk about the, the one that is mostly being um, uh, used in the industry, is that these MWD tools um, would operate via what we call a mod pulse telemetry. And mod pulse telemetry takes into account that so as we are drilling, uh, we have our surface pumps. These surface pumps are pumping into our standpipe pressure, into the standpipe, going through the Kelly or, or a top drive down to the uh, drilling stand or the Kelly, or let's say the top drive normally, and then the drill string. And then uh, as you are drilling, you have flow going through the, um, uh, the drill string uh, all the way from the bit and getting out in the annuals. So what the MWD tool has is that it has um, uh, some sort of a pressure or, um, or uh, pressure restriction inside the MWD. And it makes some pressure restrictions so that you, at surface, you would feel some pressure, uh, some pressure pulses and the pressure waves coming to surface. And these ones are what is being interpreted by different sensors to tell you that, okay, we are seeing from this sort of wave coming from the MWD. And this wave is telling me uh, I can have some encoders at surface that would give me binary figures of zeros and ones that would uh, eventually tell me what the tool has been reading and what measurements have been uh, I'm getting. Um, definitely, there are other uh, means now that are being um, uh, publicized, uh, like um, like wild, wire drill pipes and and so. But but this is the mostly used in the industry, and all companies have been going towards uh, this mod uh, 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 mod pulse telemetry with different speeds and different uh, strength as well of the, of the signal uh, that you can uh, adapt to. Uh, definitely, the wire drill pipe has come afterwards, and this is. Um, with, with sake of uh, increasing this telemetry and this uh, uh, bit rate that is coming to surface. All right. Okay. So, yeah, so this is uh, mostly what you see at surface in terms of uh, encoding. And then, um, uh, and then, as we mentioned, that uh, you get these sensors uh, at surface. Um, so, um, so, one thing that people many times do not imagine uh, is that you are, yes, pump, people sometimes think that the signal comes from the annulus. With the with the with the with the flow, but good engineers would understand that as you are pumping, and you're making these restrictions here, the uh, the the pulses are actually going against or in the opposite. The pressure pulses are going in the opposite direction from the flow, and this is where you put your surface sensors and uh, and you start getting your uh, your signal. 
All right? And these sensors then are connected to uh, surface machines, surface computers that read all the, the required measurements. Okay, all right. So, so just going uh, forward, um, direction drilling considerations, uh, definitely as we said, direction drilling considerations are, um, uh, it's, it's a very uh, vastly uh, used currently in the industry. More, uh, I would say that uh, in most of the locations I've been seeing, um, most of the wells are, are directional wells. And with this, there comes a lot of direction considerations. Uh, part of it is proximity well to well, as we mentioned about the anti-collisions. This is why your surveys and anti-collision monitoring needs to be um, uh, very clear. Uh, you need to be looking at achieving the targets that you are going for. So again, um, uh, understanding the well path is, is very critical. Uh, if you are even just sitting in some specific layers, it, uh, as I'll, I'll be showing this, it even makes it more, uh, more important. Orientation and inclination within the reservoir, and this is what we were mentioning now, is, is how to stay within the reservoir is, is a very important uh, part of the direction uh, business. Uh, casing setting depth is, is um, this sets what your hole size is, what your um, uh, kickoff point will be, where your, um, uh, what will be your uh, dog legs, uh, and dog legs stand for uh, the rate of build or rate of inclination change that you will be uh, working for. Uh, torque and drags uh, type of drill pipe would affect it. avoiding hole cleaning because as you get to more deviation you start looking at how you can clean this hole and making sure that all your cuttings are cutting out of the well. Uh, the stresses that you'll be getting towards because drilling towards uh, one direction is different from drilling vertical is, is, uh, is different from drilling uh, towards a different direction because the stresses um, in the ground uh, would differ. Uh, avoid downhole problems definitely with like uh, faults and uh, mobile formations, stuck pipe problems are all things that you would see more as you are getting towards direction drilling and there are very strong processes to ensure that uh, that you can manage these uh, these risks. Okay. All right, so, so I think this was uh, mostly what I wanted to share with you on the first part on, um, on concepts, uh, how, we, um, how we look at uh, direction drilling and what is this business and how we, how we want to be drilling these wells and, uh, and how we, uh, we correlate it with different steering uh, that happens uh, worldwide. All right. Um, all right, so, so this is the first part that I want to, uh, to, uh, to cover and hopefully um, uh, uh, is, is clear enough or, uh, or definitely I, I'll be welcoming any questions that come uh, later on uh, at the end of the session. All right, so moving on um, to the technologies and the services that you normally would be looking at from direction drilling. So direction drilling, as we mentioned, uh, you would look at, uh, as we said, uh, some steering mechanism, and this is where you look at steerable systems. And here I'll be showing the standard steerable motors. And we'll look at how we can look even at uh, drilling these wells and, uh, and deviating the wells with uh, what we call the rotary steerable systems. And then we'll look at, uh, at the MWD and LWD technologies, uh, uh, a little bit on what we can deliver on measurements and logging as well. Um, logging uh, in, uh, in drilling BHAs has gone a long way in the industry and it can deliver uh, very, very close uh, measurements and uh, very close services to what you would be getting as well on wireline applications. And normally it is, um, it is uh, mostly, mostly favored in directional wells com uh, compared to, uh, to vertical wells or to wireline and vertical wells uh, because of the complexity of running the wireline in, in deviated wells. And then you also has the, have the geosteering uh, solutions, which is maintaining inside the reservoir or maximizing your contact inside the reservoir. And, uh, and with all the real-time uh, real decisions that you need to be taking uh, as you are uh, trying to steer inside the reservoir. And finally, as well, on the process of the drilling engineering and how you plan these wells and how you look at the, the simulations and, and risk management uh, while planning these wells. All right. So what I'll start with is uh, is the first part, and uh, um, and and definitely, I mean, just showing you most of the, um, uh, I would say, all of the uh, major um, uh, providers of direction drilling services would have all of the, of these categories of the direction of the drilling um, uh, drilling services or direction drilling services or steerable systems and LWD and uh, and MWD uh, solutions and technologies. All right. So, so to start with uh, uh, the mud motors, if we start with the mud motors, uh, mud motors are, um, as, as you can see here, mud motors are, um, uh, are a device in the BHA 
that would change the hydraulic power, which comes from the flow inside the motor, to mechanical power, which, uh, which is uh, rotating the bit uh, downhole. And the objective is to give you more RPM or more torque at the bit itself as you are uh, drilling. Okay, all right, so what does it consist of? Uh, uh, the mud motor would, uh, would mostly uh, consist of main uh, items. The major part of it is the power section, and the power section consists of the rotor and stator, as I'll be showing. And these are the ones that, uh, that uh, with the motion or the, with the flow of, of, of flow inside them, they start rotating, and they will be connected to a transmission system. The transmission system will be connected to the bit, and then the bit will be rotated. A very important part of this mud motor and what makes it steerable is that it has um, uh, a bent housing. And the bent housing, it's adjustable bent housing that makes a little bit of a bend inside the motor uh, or uh, on the configuration of the motor. And this bent is what you orient to deliver uh, the required or to, uh, uh, to orient it to the direction that you need to be steering and to be uh, going uh, or heading towards as, as you are doing the direction work. All right, and and the major part of uh, of the strength of this motor comes, as we said, from uh, from the rotor and stator, which is the uh, power section uh, of the motor, and it consists of a rotor which lies inside a stator, and this rotor is normally one lobe less, and this is what makes the configuration. Uh, once you start pumping through it, it starts rotating, and then this rotor is connected to the, as you mentioned, to the transmission that is connected afterwards to the uh, bit shaft. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. These are uh, these are uh, different types of of stators uh, that would affect and would would uh, would show different uh, power from different power sections. Okay. However, as we know that the steerable motors have been there in the industry since a uh, very long time, since the beginning of the probably uh, uh, of the direction drilling business, and um, uh, and one major uh, drawback of the steerable systems, as we know, is that to orient the motor towards one direction, you need to stop the drill string from rotation. And you need to orient this uh, bent angle that we have inside the motor to, uh, to drill uh, with it with, without rotation. And, and definitely this has, uh, uh, this has its limitation of uh, causing some tortosity in the wellbore itself, which would cause some, uh, some buckling of the drill string as you are drilling and would, would limit the reach uh, that uh, these motor systems can uh, can go towards, and as well, it has its own limitations of increasing of friction factors, hole cleaning the, as you are not rotating, uh, differential sticking problems as um, as you are also not rotating, and you are exposing yourself more uh, to stationary um, uh, stationary conditions, uh, and uh, the whole trajectory becomes uh, more crooked and uh, and more tortuous uh, that uh, that can make running of casing completion and the, and and the likes uh, very difficult or potentially more difficult okay so based on this the the industry has uh, since the um, uh, since uh, 99 almost 2000 beginning of 2000 where the idea of the rotary steerable systems or to have a system that uh, you can do all the direction work without rotation with the, sorry with full rotation is uh, becomes more uh, more uh, beneficial and this is where you would start seeing that uh, there has been a number of uh, of of technologies that have, have come into the into the uh, industry that are all working towards uh, rotating solutions and full rotating solutions and uh, doing the direction work with full rotating solutions uh, one of the very popular ones uh, i mean i'm showing some of, of them and you can see the different applications uh, for uh, maybe for standard drilling for uh, more uh, enhanced performance uh, things that are looking at high temperatures and very high temperature applications things with that would uh, look at uh, drilling in very soft formation that you uh, to enable to get more uh, uh, dog legs or more build rates uh, then even further higher build rates that you can be in maybe in 100 feet can get 15 degree uh, or 20 degree uh, build rates and, and above uh, then you start combining the rotary steerable systems with motor with a motor assembly or a motor uh, section on top of it to give it more power and more RPM. Uh, then even even the vertical uh, applications where you uh, you might be getting some deviation tendencies, even these would start looking at uh, some of rotary serial systems to maintain the verticality of the well. So definitely the industry has started moving 
uh, much, much more towards the rotary receivable system. And, and as we mentioned for the cases of the whole cleaning, getting more re uh, reach and uh, getting better reservoir contact as well and, and better measurements. So I'll, I'll touch with you a couple of very popular uh, ones that have been very widely used in the industry. And, uh, and one of them would, uh, just to give you a bit of a glimpse on how the technology has been uh, working. And there is a lot of engineering and a lot of uh, research that went into this uh, over the last 20 years uh, that made it uh, really very usable to a lot of the clients and very, very economical as well. All right, and this is one of the systems, for example, that we, uh, that we look at. Um, uh, where you uh, you can call it a push the bit uh, rotary cerebral systems, and uh, and this system would have uh, some pads at the outside uh, of it where you can, uh, as you are drilling, these pads would be pushing against one specific direction. So let's say that you want to be increasing your inclination. Uh, it would this tool with the electronics configuration and the accelerometers, magnetometers inside, and the measurements of, um, of again, gravitational field forces and the magnetic field forces, it would understand the, the low side of the hole as you are drilling, and it would be kicking off or pushing, your, uh, pushing the string towards a direction uh, that would be increasing its inclination, for example, or reducing its inclination if you are trying to get into a drop section or reducing the inclination. And, and it would have its own electronics inside that would only direct the, the, the pads uh, or the, these pistons or, or pads at the, as you are rotating the string, uh, as you are rotating the string, only the pad at the bottom side, for example, of the hole would be the one uh, pushing against. So it, uh, it would have the mechanisms of turbines and, uh, and electronics uh, and the mechanical components to divert the flow inside that, uh, that would uh, accurately and uh, specifically uh, di diverge some specific amount of the flow to uh, to to serve this purpose yeah and uh, and all of this as you would see it's it's, it's turbine powered so uh, so even the technologies that used to be implemented based on uh, battery powered uh, uh, it's all reducing to extend the life of these runs and it all becomes turbine powered as, the, as you are pumping, it's getting its, its power from the turbines and it's, um, it's, it's functional, yeah. All right, so this is one of the very uh, uh, popular examples that have been uh, 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 proving itself uh, extensively in, in, uh, in the oil and gas industry. Um, another example, which is the point a bit, uh, bit uh, system, I mean, uh, these are the mostly two uh, terminologies that, uh, that the industry has been using is whether it's push the bit systems or point the bit systems. And these somehow uh, tend to be used more or, uh, or, or have some specific applications, for example, in, in software formation, uh, where you don't have a lot of strength in the formation to push against, then you probably want to be able to point the bit direction itself. And and this becomes a little bit more uh, different. Uh, this, for example, if you look at this specific system, it, uh, it has a turbine, uh, which also makes it uh, power generated uh, uh, via flow, it has its own electronics. And then it would have, uh, instead of having um, uh, pads uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, turbines inside that can be uh, orienting the pads, it would actually be having an internal servo motor, electrical motor, which is being powered by this turbine and, uh, and would be connecting with a drive shaft uh, via some sort of a universal joint uh, and an offset mandrel that would maintain the direction of this bend in one specific direction as you are drilling and trying to build or drop inclination. So again, again, very novel systems um, uh, that have been uh, there and has been uh, being able to uh, manage the drilling environment with all the energy that you put in the drill string system. I mean, you can imagine these electronics, uh, how it has to be very robust and, um, and, uh, and to be able to survive this uh, drilling environment with temperatures, with, uh, with drilling uh, weight on bit, uh, torque parameters, and, uh, uh, and so that uh, to be able to deliver uh, the required direction work with, with reliability and, and consistency as well. Yeah, so definitely a lot of engineering has been going uh, towards this and continuous improvement. All right, so 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 with this, you uh, you would see that uh, that 
all the problems that you used to be having with the with the with the steerable motor system as your uh, uh, that you need to do the, your direction work where, while the string is stationary now it vanished and you are able to do all your direction work uh, uh, rotating and um, uh, and you see these uh, the, these sort of profiles i mean once you start having getting into the arena of rotary steerable systems to give you directional control you start looking at wells that you can instead of drilling for, uh, to specific inclination or specific length and then uh, you uh, you don't have any more uh, weight or you you lose your weight to the string or you get a lot of tortosity that you're not able to um, uh, to pass weight to the to the bha any further you start looking that these systems can go to inclinations up to 126 if you need. Yeah. So there, there have been cases that, uh, that these actually went to um, not only horizontal, but the maximum it went to was 126. And this is really, um, it's, uh, it is, it is uh, amazing. Uh, so, so you see, uh, even then you can see that you can get between different layers, get from one layer to the other uh, as you are doing. And all of the ERD wells that the industry has been uh, bragging about and getting to the 50,000 uh, feet uh, wells, 15 kilometers away, and, uh, and, and all of this uh, are all being drilled by rotary serial system. And this is where the industry has been able to, uh, to push itself to, uh, to these levels. All right. Um, yeah, so so I think uh, with this, uh, this would give you a bit of an idea on how the technology has been evolving and uh, and uh, and how the steering systems have definitely been able to um, uh, to get to areas where uh, which were not possible before, and the sensors that it has would also have these sort of inclination and uh, and uh, and azimuth measurements that would would guide it as you are drilling, and the MWD would be sending back all of this data uh, to guide the trajectory of the well itself. All right. So now moving to the measurements while drilling, and um, and and again, as we mentioned, the measurements while drilling would have its own DNI packages, its, uh, its own sensors of uh, of direction and inclination to define the well path and give the definitive uh, information about the well path itself. But at the same time, it would be uh, g having the sirens and the telemetry that would send all the the measurements uh, back to the surface via the mud pulse uh, telemetry. And and uh, that definitely there has always been improvement on it to uh, to ensure that it has more LCM tolerances because again these are electronics in the middle of the uh, of the string and the mechanical items in, in the middle of the string it would have its uh, you we cannot treat it as a rotary assembly it would have its own specification on uh, LCM requirements and tolerances uh, and uh, and all of these would have specifications uh, to serve that. Um, and and the signal that comes from them uh, would differ from one tool uh, uh, to the other. All right, so just to give you a bit of an idea on how the type of signals go. So you would mostly have uh, what we call um, um, uh, negative uh, pulses and positive pulses. And these pulses would go uh, as you are um, as you are in the string, you would make some uh, opening sideways to give negative uh, pressures. Um, that you can read at surface, or you have the positive pulses, which again makes the restriction as uh, while you are drilling and you are getting these pulses at surface. Or what is uh, the developments of the industry has been going towards the continuous wave, where you have these siren in the middle uh, of the MWD tool, and as you are pumping, these sirens keep uh, opening and closing, and uh, and the signal would reflect back. Uh, pressure signals would be reflected back and be seen uh, at surface. And all of this would be um, uh, sent as uh, as waves with different frequencies, with different uh, phase shifts, and uh, and would be seen as uh, as uh, ones and zeros, as as we call it, or would would then be encoded at surface as as binary uh, decode encode. All right. Okay, so so again, this was a quick one about how the MWD actually um, uh, systems work. Then uh, what I wanted to show here is um, is the complexity of uh, of the drill string now is uh, is uh, to what extent you have been able to move on the complexity of the drill string itself, and uh, and here you uh, you would see that um, in any uh, specific uh, drill string you would be having as we mentioned uh, some uh, some steerable system uh, some uh, the LWD systems that you can have 
you can have uh, definitely your MWD tools has to be there. And as well, you can have some downhole measurements if you require on, on, the, on the parameters, the scene weight to bit torque, uh, or even some further geosteering uh, tools. So, so then we, we see that also with this, you don't only have the steering part, but you also have the logging part of the weld. And this what, again, brings a lot of value, especially in the high end operations and um, uh, high um, uh, cost operations like deep water or HPHD, where trips would make a, a one day cost is around half a million or one million dollar, half a cost uh, or one day cost of a trip, which you want definitely to do all of these measurements sim sim simultaneously and, uh, and get all of these data uh, while drilling. All right, so just to give you again a bit of um, uh, a debrief on what measurements you can be seeing while drilling, um, uh, I want to show you a bit of, uh, of this coming up. All right, so this is one of the tools, for example, that, uh, that you can see resistivity measurements. And I'm sure that you have uh, probably have been uh, seeing some of the previous lectures on, uh, on logging tools. And these are resistivity measurements that you can uh, infer as you, are, uh, as you are getting. And you can not only get one resistivity curve, you can get multiple resistivity curves that can tell you whether you are having invasion profiles in, in, uh, of the hole itself. And these would normally be very important measurements and, uh, and information for, um, for petrophysical uh, uh, understanding. Also, you can look at um, some, um, some images of the formation. So it will tell you uh, how much of interbedding and beds that you are uh, looking at. And it will give you with the clarity of, if you want to look at the wire line, you'd see it with the clarity and even more continuous sometimes in, uh, from, uh, from what you can get in some of the uh some of the wireline data all right okay uh, also you can get as we mentioned density and uh, and neutron and uh, or porosity so so this is very important information for uh, to understand the density of the rock that you are into and uh, the porosity at itself so that you can understand whether it's um, it's a reservoir zone that you can produce uh, conventionally from uh, from density and porosity data okay uh, definitely, I'll not go much into the details of all of these uh, equipment, how they operate, but, but just to give you uh, an idea on how much these DHAs and drill strings have been complicated and complex to the level that you can understand and interpret uh, formations as you are drilling uh, to the level that you want to steer and place the wells in the required reservoirs. Okay, sonic data as well, which is uh, which helps us very much with the seismic uh, tying and uh, and tells us as well uh, some pore pressure and uh, geomechanics understanding of uh, of the formations that we are dealing through. All right, so 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 this is all the LWD probably or some of the LWD. There has been so much advanced LWD data that uh, you can get with uh, with sigma data, with uh, with uh, pressure points, with formation sampling. I mean, there there is not uh, with uh, with different sort of imaging and water-based mod, oil-based mod uh, modules. So definitely, this has also taken so so long, and there are every day there are new technologies that are coming out. And uh, hopefully, as the market um, uh, gets to um, uh, to the level it needs, uh, all of these uh, would bring a lot of economics and uh, and efficiencies to uh, different operators. All right, but uh, but now moving on to a bit again on the technology side, on uh, on on especially on the horizontal welds, on how we do the well placement and and the geo steering. And before I finish, I I wanted to to give you a bit of a glimpse on this um, as well. So, so in many cases, uh, uh, the petrophysical and the geological maps uh, would expect some, and, and sometimes the seismic data would, would not get to the uh, sub-seismic faults information and would give you some, uh, some interpretation of layers uh, to be with specific dipping and specific thickness. However, as you get to drill these wells, um, it really, uh, in many cases, it differs. And, uh, and I'll show you this is example, for example, where, uh, where this was a well planned to be as such. And theoretically, you would think that you might want to be drilling this as geometrical as you can see it here. And you have your measurements, you have you, you know where you want to go, and you can drill geometrically. But again, um, due to the uncertainty in many of these reservoirs and, uh, and uh, the complexity of, uh, of the geology, in many cases, what you expect is not what you get. Yeah? So you need to have these in, insurances about the well placement and the geosteering side uh, to be able to help you to uh, to steer the wells, and uh, and you see that uh, that actually this is the case that uh, you might be looking into, 
And instead of drilling a um, um, uh, standard well, what you actually want to drill is some sort of a well that can intercept the different uh, layers. And this is what your uh, your geo steering and uh, and uh, your uh, data, uh, real time data and real time decisions on the geo steering uh, needs to look like. Okay, all right. So uh, so here. This is um, an outcrop of uh, uh, limestone layer. Uh, to show you, this is an outcrop that uh, that is probably as, as as similar to what you would be getting in some of the cases uh, uh, underground, and it, it shows all the different probably some of the layers that you'd be intercepting um, um, and and lenses of them. And the G steering systems have have went also a long way uh, on on identifying geological information. So, for example, if your seismic data would tell you um, features within uh, tens of feet uh, of distance, uh, what your uh, probably your resistivity propagation would tell you this much of uh, of depth of the investigation or feet. And let's say that your images will be just the image of of the well bore to tell you some dipping. Uh, but this becomes all you only see the resistivity after you see it uh, for after the bit has filled through it uh, you become uh, you want to steer uh, later on or after you pass it with the image then you want to uh, to steer uh, again it's what you have cut through uh, but also the geo steering side is to see beyond what uh, what actually uh, you have been doing and this is what geo steering technologies have been going towards is not only to define what is where you are in terms of logging but actually to see beyond the BHA itself. And uh, it had started to have depths of investigation that can go beyond 15 feet, 100 feet, 15 to 100 feet, depending on what you are using. And it will tell you not only the, um, the nearby layers, but uh, actually will tell you up to 100 layers. It can tell you where is your oil water contact before reaching the oil water contact. It can tell you where is the um, uh, high resistivity pay, where is the low resistivity pays, and the, uh, and the or shale intervals. Yeah, and it and this becomes very good information definitely as you are steering. It tells you that where you are and uh, where do you expect layers to be intercepting. Okay. And these are examples again of, of geo steering inside the reservoirs uh, from being very uh, conventional uh, reactive uh, based on uh, as non azimuthal data or then azimuthal data where you exit a layer to see that you have exit and then come back. Or you have these uh, proactive uh, means of understanding that the layer is, is coming close and uh, before you get to it, then you start steering back down. Uh, but you still want to be at the top of the layer where the oil is, so you start maintaining uh, with some specific distance away from uh, from these layers. Uh, so, so this is definitely becomes a lot of information, very good information. And at the same time, you seeing will not go alone. I mean, you need the data, but also you need the um, uh, the response, the proper response on steering side. So you need to have the capable equipment to be able to steer away from uh, from different layers and you have to have this re real-time data of, of steering. Uh, so so um, this all what brings us again to the decision making real-time data and the real-time uh, decision making um, uh, requirements. Okay again this is another example where uh, pre-job uh, modeling tells you that you should be in a good layer and eventually what you end up is uh, is you end up with with your well plan is actually somewhere very wrong. And, uh, and with the geo steering understanding where your well comes, you start making multiple decisions to maintain within a layer that you want to be maintaining uh, within. And this is what brings the, as we mentioned, the cost per, uh, per barrel to the levels that you want. Because then instead of drilling out of reservoir, having your net to gross uh, very far off, no, actually then you can make uh, as much as 90 to 100% uh, within uh, your, uh, your required reservoir. Okay, all right. So, so, so this is uh, this this is basically what I wanted to share on uh, on the technology sides and give you a bit of an idea and a glimpse on on the technology itself and where it is uh, and the developments that it has uh, gone through.
definitely this is not uh, this is not everything i mean this is uh, we want to try to capture as much as possible in in this hour session and we can definitely uh, uh, go to more specific uh, details um, maybe in other sessions but what i wanted to close is uh, is a little bit on um, um, on the job cycle uh, process and uh, and the process um, i mean based on all of this um, the concepts and the technologies and um, and requirements you would expect that you need to have very very strong processes uh, while drilling these wells and uh, pre-planning and pre-job uh, documentations and work around for these needs really to be to the level that you can uh, deliver these wells sometimes people think that it's a day-to-day -day business but um, but definitely if it doesn't have a very strong background it doesn't, it doesn't have a very strong a process to capture it um, uh, from the understanding the uh, well requirements, the offset data analysis and the challenges that you are looking at and doing all the well design modeling and, uh, and BHA selection and the equipment selection, understanding the risks and mitigating these risks, uh, preparing equipment and, uh, and, uh, and having it to the specification that is required uh, for to deliver these wells, this is this is what really makes this um, this business or this uh, these applications very interesting and uh, and very engaging. And um, and definitely there is a, every day there are challenges and and every well is different from uh, from from the one before. Okay, and then you do your uh, GRI or uh, job risk assessments and uh, technical ones. You definitely have to get approvals, reviews, uh, reviews. Uh, then you go through the execution, the optimization, the real-time monitoring, and then uh, definitely have to finish up with the evaluation and, uh, and include, including all the lessons learned and, uh, and, uh, and understanding your benchmarks uh, uh, where you have achieved them. All right. So, so I'll, I'll give you a bit of a couple of workflows that, uh, that are very important in the job uh, planning cycle. And uh, these will probably be, uh, again, to give you a bit of a glimpse on, on the day-to-day -day work that, um, uh, that makes it very important. And to uh, to govern and to manage. So, for example, that uh, that uh, you are looking at some specific services, and uh, and you have decided that uh, let's say that uh, these are the specification. You start from uh, uh, or specification of, of of requirement of the of the well. Um, then you need really to start with some sort of offset well analysis, understanding what is your mechanical earth model, what is the geomechanics that you are looking through, and then you 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 define the well profile. Based on this, based on what inclinations you need to uh, to end up with, what uh, what profile to reach to the targets, where you can make your uh, kickoff points within which formations that you are uh, you are drilling through, and then you combine these both into um, you combine these both and uh, combine with them definitely the uh, rock strength of uh, the rock strength of the formation that you are drilling through and the bit selection and bit specification that will be able to steer with it to the direction requirements that you you need. And then include all the uh, environment that you are uh, drilling in with uh, uh, temperatures, fluid, uh, fluid modeling uh, that will be powering up this uh, drill string, and uh, and eventually come up with uh, with some sort of um, of uh, dynamic modeling. And uh, this has been uh, one of the very strong enablements of the uh, of the digital enablements in the industry. Yeah, is uh, with the power of computation and the power of modeling that we're having, this becomes a, a very important tool uh, to be able to understand how much of stresses, how much of bending, how much of vibrations that you expect with the changes of formation and the changes as well of, um, uh, of, of requirements and, and plan to the world. All right. And then, and then once you do all of this modeling, then you come with your work instructions on your limits for the BHA in terms of uh, parameters, uh, limits. Uh, that you want to be running this BHA, and then you come up with your final BHA that, uh, or drill string that you propose uh, for the well uh, with the guiding uh, uh, drilling practices and parameters. Okay, so this is one of the optimization workflow, but the one that I want to um, uh, give you a bit of um, more uh, insight on is how you do this uh, 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 dynamic modeling. So definitely during this process that I've been explaining, there was, there's a number of software that is being used uh, between uh, anti-collision software, surveying software, uh, well design, uh, BHA uh, simulations, hydraulic simulations, torque and simulations uh, for the well, uh, looking at, uh, at the database as well. Uh, 
and again, uh, one of the very important, and this is one example that I wanted to share with you, is uh, is how you uh, you look at very complex assemblies. Yeah. So, for example, I wanted to share one of the deep water uh, wells, which is uh, assemblies on on a well that you can see here um, at at the right. And this is definitely an assembly that uh, that has uh, a lot of electronics, a lot of um, uh, drilling tools, and um, and, uh, and 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 as, in the assembly, and you can see here, for example, a rotary serial system, uh, uh, gamma resistivity, uh, formation pressure that you can take, uh, MW tool, a sonic tool, with under reaming service as well. So you have an on-demand reamer. So not only that you are drilling one uh, pilot hole with one specific um, uh, size, but also you have an under reamer, two under reamers in the string that you want to be opening up while drilling. Uh, this uh, this hole. So you are actually not only drilling, but you are actually under reaming while drilling as well. And these sort of assemblies become very uh, they, they are getting to be very popular uh, because they serve requirements on uh, on liner contingencies and casing contingencies uh, for uh, high pressure uh, zones. And but but with them definitely comes a lot of of uh, dynamics and a lot of um, uh, uh, downhole dynamics that needs to be measured and and, and properly modeled. And with this modeling, <clears throat> you can see with these uh, finite element analysis and uh, with these uh, drilling downhole drilling uh, modeling, uh, you can see that how they can uh, actually dictate uh, or show you while drilling how the different BHA components would be uh, seeing in terms of uh, potentially fatigue or potentially uh, stresses uh, during the string or vibrations as well. And you can do this along different rocks, so you you can have some specification and some metrics for the different rocks, whether being shale, sandstone, siltstone, salt, and it can give you exactly what would be the 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 bottom hole assembly or the bottom hole uh, pattern uh, of the bit itself, and whether this BHA would be stable or not. So a lot of these measurements uh, would really dictate on the pre uh, pre job planning uh, would dictate how much of uh, of stability and and it would deliver the the requirements uh, of of the BHA itself. All right. Okay. Um, moving again to another example, that um, just to um, to show you how complex and uh, and uh, these drill down hole strings have actually been able to go towards, is this is another example where um, where we can say that your BHA is not only connected normally to a drill string, but it can actually be connected to a conductor, and this is a very um, uh, a very now it's getting to be very economical and <clears throat> and popular application in um, in, uh, in deep water where you would be connecting your drill string or your downhole um, uh, assembly uh, to uh, to the conductor and you will be jetting this conductor for example uh, jetting the conductor while you are uh, before you start drilling uh, so so the amount of optimization and uh, and uh, creativity and uh, and novelness and in, in these applications becomes the level that you can really uh, plan these very well, understand what are your uh, uh, available uh, weights and hook load, the measurements that you can use to um, to, to do these uh, operations safely. Okay, and, and now, yeah, again, again, with the technology that we are having with the downhole ROVs and, and deep water operation, you can be monitoring this actually as you are, uh, as you are doing that. Okay. All right, so uh, another application or another also uh, one of the, um, uh, like not very popular um, uh, work is um, is also this is where we need to do all of the modeling all the pre uh, job planning because in some cases you want also to have some novel bhas where for example this is an assembly that you have a rotary serial system under a motor and you're doing your direction work with your rotary serial system and you have your motor on top to give it the extra power and the extra rpm and then the mwd but in some specific cases for some specific applications you might want to to change yeah, and you might want to have the MWD closer to the um, uh, to the rotary serial system to give you a closer measurements, uh, near bit measurements, uh, and and have the motor uh, higher on top. This is not a, a very standard, but it's it's getting popular as well. Uh, that is needed in some applications, and uh, and with these changes, the BHA dynamics definitely changes, uh, yeah, and your working parameters, working um, uh, requirements, or working envelope. It becomes different, and here again comes a lot of the planning and uh, and pre-job uh, planning and requirements uh, for these wells. Okay, 
All right. So, uh, so after you do all the pre-planning uh, work, and then you start going to the um, uh, to the rig site to to deliver these wells. I also wanted to share um, uh, before we close uh, a little bit on how the execution work itself uh, happens, and uh, how the, the real-time decision matrix uh, really work. And 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 this is um, let's say this is an offshore rig or a deep water rig where you have all the data coming up from. Uh, 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 while drilling, you have the surface data uh, coming up. You have your BHA, and the BHA has been drilling into formation. And then while drilling, you have all the measurements from the downhole coming through uh, from the RSS or from the MWD or from LWD coming through the MWD to surface uh, with all the measurements. And, and, and then all of this can be uh, not only kept on the rig where you have a direction driller or you have an MWD crew uh, working with them and operating uh, to the client. All of this now became very visible to everyone from the office-based uh, people to the rig-based uh, people to the geologists in the office to uh, headquarters of the operators uh, can be able to see it uh, while drilling and making these decisions uh, workflow on a, on a real-time basis. And you can get everything that is happening on the rigs to the, to the fingertips of uh, while, while drilling, yeah? And this is where we see that the industry definitely has been going, yeah? Uh, is that uh, the remote operations and uh, real-time decisions and real-time decision centers uh, has been definitely the way to go for, uh, for, uh, for many operators. And this is how you you eventually create more or bring more um, uh, or attract more uh, clever people as well to uh, to the industry. Yeah, is that uh, not only you have to be working on the rig, but actually you can be as with the expertise that you have, you can work uh, in the in the office and and be managing all of this uh, from from the fingertips of uh, of your operation. Um, so likewise, looking at uh, how the remote operation can be helping is. Um, is reducing the thing, uh, the, reducing the footprint on the rig, and this comes with HSE risks that uh, can be caused on the rig, or even uh, cases where uh, where people are locked down or or uh, or in quarantine or uh, or in cases like uh, like what the world is experiencing now, and this all uh, definitely, I mean, uh, uh, looking at the industry now, we have not seen the industry stopping, but uh, it has been looking at the more uh, novel. Uh, ideas on how the business has been continuing and uh, without really stopping it because of these technologies uh, that we are seeing. Okay. Um, then, uh, then definitely, then once you have the data at office, then you can do all the optimization, all the decision making, whether it being uh, drilling optimization metrics or uh, or working on the optimizing the different metrics or. Uh, or even looking at uh, getting expertise from all the geo, uh, geo, uh, geo or petrophysical uh, uh, expertise that need to look at data and make decisions uh, on the spot. All right. And then definitely you can update your parameters. If you see things getting out of the norm, you can update your parameters or update your trajectory as, as required. Okay. All right. So uh, one of the important parts here as well is um, uh, that uh, I wanted to uh, to ensure that uh, it gets embedded into your heads before uh, before we move on, is um, is is these modelings are there for uh, not only to uh, to ensure that strings work properly, but eventually when once you are making these modeling and uh, and ensuring that the BHA is stable and uh, ensuring that you are running at the optimum. Uh, parameters in uh, in RPM or uh, or weight on bit or um, uh, and you are in the stable zone. You don't only uh, get or to avoid or avoid uh, damages or uh, or not getting the BHA integrity that you require, but as well it ends up with with more energy getting into drillability. And you can see here, you are, once you are putting energy in the system, it's like any energy. Energy in is should be equal to the energy out. If the energy out is not going for drillability and for uh, drilling, it's probably going to uh, more vibrations on the string and unneeded energy that, uh, that uh, makes more resonance and, uh, and damages to the whole, uh, whole string, leading to maybe uh, bits damages or, uh, or uh, or string uh, uh, integrity issues, or even uh, equipment uh, 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 damages. Yeah. So 
this is definitely again part of the workflow for uh, for all of the optimizations that happen uh, while drilling. Okay, and uh, finally, just to uh, to close out, this is uh, probably my last slide, and uh, and I wanted to show you the workflow for how the real time monitoring uh, really happens now, and uh, and it's very similar to what we mentioned before, where you have the rig, you have all the sensors coming from the different parties. All of this can go to uh, through uh, width data. This is what they call the width data, and through uh, 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 VSATs uh, going out to servers where it can do all the collaboration work that is required from having the optimization center, from uh, performance tracking, uh, monitoring to operators. All of this with the with the digital enablement that uh, that we are getting now, and then you can get all the visualizations that are required to specify how. Uh, how you are drilling and which reservoirs you are getting into and uh, and maximize uh, the overall net to gross uh, of the well and uh, and give the economics that is uh, is needed and definitely now in the current environment this is where people need to be more creative to be able to sustain this um, uh, this um, uh, this industry and to ensure it's competitive uh, to the level that uh, that will bring value to the stakeholders afterwards all right, so I think I, I hope uh, <clears throat> I hope I have given you a bit of a glimpse on the direction drilling um, uh, uh, workflows and, and operations and business. And uh, I hope you have um, uh, got some useful information on, on the different concepts uh, of direction drilling and, um, and technologies and, and processes. Uh, and uh, hopefully there will be uh, further uh, later on further uh, sessions that we can even discuss more advanced systems that, uh, that can be uh, of interest to the, to the team. Thank you very much and, uh, and uh, definitely I'll, uh, I'll be opening for, uh, for questions if, uh, if there is. Oh, thank you so much Jira, for the uh, valuable contribution and the great presentation. We have Oh God, we have like lots of questions. Um, so I picked um, some questions for you. Either they are frequently asked or they are very specific and would be enriching to everyone on the call or on the webinar. So uh, let's start with the first one. Uh, some reservoirs are suited in the zone of active faults. So what is the best strategy to do the directional drilling that cross cut these active faults if we have them in the subsurface? how to prevent damage if these active faults move from about one to five millimeters per year, and the formation is not consolidated. What's uh, the design will you propose? Hmm. So, so definitely this is, um, uh, this all goes under the risk management of wells, yeah? And this is how you go through the philosophy of, uh, of of drilling these specific formations and the offset well analysis uh, for these wells. Normally, uh, for uh, complex reservoirs, um, it comes hand in hand uh, when we when we do our uh, pre-job meetings and uh, pre-section meetings. We always do uh, and uh, pre uh, or drilling well on paper, as we call it. We always do these um, uh, interactions with uh, with the GNG team and the geomechanics team. And, uh, and normally these information are, will be very important uh, for uh, geomechanics uh, to understand what is the optimum mud weight, for example, that is required. Uh, normally mud weight plays a lot of role on stabilizing the formations. If these are some uh, faulted uh, intervals or fractured uh, formations, then as well, uh, the practices in front of these uh, faults would be very important to manage. Normally we look at the tripping practices because these are the areas that we normally get caught most of the time by disturbing these uh, fault uh, intervals. Uh, in many cases we see that uh, unless it's a rubble zone that once you get through, you start getting these, um, uh, these uh, uh, cavings or you get these uh, formation break, uh, break offs, uh, then, uh, then during the tripping is normally where, where you get uh, caught with these. Uh, but, uh, but as well, this is where, where uh, look ahead technologies and, um, and uh, uh, geo steering technologies have also been looking for. So uh, especially where the areas that you will be expecting faults or you'll be expecting to have some rubble zones, um, a lot of uh, technologies recently have been going towards this is the look ahead tools. And, uh, and these would define if there is some formation changes that you are expecting or some rubble zones that you have been able to get the signature of. 
and uh, and once you are understanding this this is where you uh, stop probably uh, uh, you see how many feet that you need to stop before and then you uh, you intercept these uh, carefully because many of the cases that uh, that would end up with stuck pipe problems or so is that when you get a drilling break and you get through these formations and uh, you don't really uh, take the time of, uh, of of gauging the hole or uh, or um, or going through it with the consciousness uh, that is needed for the different uh, uh, parts of the drilling crew. But once you have these look ahead measurements and you understand that this is coming and that much of feed, then you can as well make a game plan with the rest of the, the crew with the different parties, uh, whether the GNG team or, or the RIC crew and, uh, and the geomechanics team and mod engineers and so, to be able to manage uh, these situations. And, and yes, there has always been a lot of practices, whether how how fast you get through these, uh, avoiding to disturbing them, uh, tripping out of them without, uh, for example, without a lot of uh, pressure and uh, and RPM um, uh, uh, disturbance, and this all becomes part of the oil field practices and managing uh, rubble zones and uh, and faulted formations. Great. But one one area that I would really investigate or look for would be these um, uh, look ahead uh, services if it would work in this specific situation. Great, so uh, another question. Uh, is there a relation between the angle of inclination and building this angle and depth? Like if the target is at 7,500 feet, for example, what is the sequence of building the angle and what is the final angle? Is there a calculation? Yeah, so, so yes, so, um, the relation is um, once you start planning these wells, this is why we're talking about uh, we need to understand the whole size that you are building in and or you are building inclination in. Because most of the time with different hole sizes, you would have different capabilities of, uh, of building inclination. So if you are building in a, a six, one, eight inch section or a six inch hole is different from building at a 12 and a quarter, 16 inch hole or even bigger. Uh, probably a bigger hole size would be looking at uh, maybe a 1.5 to 2.5 uh, degree of inclination per 100 feet. As you get deeper, you get to uh, harder for, uh, to get to a slimmer formation. Then you can look at six, seven, eight, uh, uh, 10, uh, 10, 15 degrees. So, so it really it differs on the well design. Uh, it will differ on the well design on the capability of the dog legs that you are getting uh, uh, at every single of the whole size that you are uh, drilling and um, uh, and yes you, you can get to the reach uh, that you require um, there, there, not, there is nothing that stops you from getting to 90 degrees in 7,000 feet yeah the 90 degrees in 7,000 feet is, uh, is like a one degree dog leg so definitely you can do uh, more than this and, uh, and and the calculation as we mentioned is the minimum curvature this is uh, how you do the, the calculation uh, based on the surveys uh, that you are having or even in the planning phase. I don't think there is a, one single answer to this because it will definitely have to look at uh, all, the, um, uh, all the aspects of the well design itself. But, uh, but in terms of getting inclinations or building to uh, 7,500, you, uh, you can definitely plan this based on the whole sizes uh, and the uh, size of equipment that you use. Okay, so another question. Could you explain more about the anti-collision challenges in ERD wells? Okay, yeah, maybe we did not cover this a lot uh, here today, but, um, uh, but anti-collision is, um, as we know, um, surveys have their uncertainties. And with every survey, we, explain, we say that uh, the survey would have an accuracy, let's say, of an inclination of a 0.1 degree inclination, and uh, depending on the surveying tool. And let's say on average for azimuth, is about, about 0.5 degree of azimuth. And with this, this is what we call that we have, um, uh, uh, we have ellipse of uncertainty. So as we are drilling, as you are increasing your inclination, every inclination would have an accumulated error. And the accumulation of errors would eventually increase your ellipse of uncertainty for the well from, uh, from maybe one, two feet around the well to, to even 100, 200 feet at the depth of, uh, let's say, 10,000 feet. 
So definitely, or 20,000 feet. So definitely, um, as we are drilling, the, the ellipse of uncertainty is increasing. And this is what we need to account for, is that we sometimes we might, yes, understand that or be positioned by the surveys that we expect that the well to be at one specific position, but we need always to account for the ellipse of uncertainty. And this tells us that, yes, we are putting this well in this space, but actually, based on the measurements, we have an uncertainty of 100 feet, let's say, sideways, and uh, 10 feet uh, up and down. And this is, again, where the geosteering services happen. If we are looking at one specific layer, we cannot only rely on the uh, surveys because there is TBD uncertainty. But as well, this is where we look at having some log logging correlations. We look at geosteering uh, measurements while drilling to map the, the reservoir that we need to be at. Once we have these uh, for the surveys, once we understand all the ellipses of uncertainty, this is where in the planning phase, we, uh, we ensure that we have enough separation between wells that even uh, these uncertainties would not uh, overlap. Uh, and this is what we are doing in uh, offshore from platforms, let's say, or even from, uh, from PAS looking at ERD wells. ERD wells definitely would have very, very uh, long um, and very big ellipses of uncertainty. The way to overcome them would be, uh, or to minimize them, would be potentially gyro runs, would be potentially uh, advanced surveying techniques like um, uh, uh, geo, uh, GRS, what we call GRS, or in-field referencing, or uh, geomagnetic, uh, uh, geomagnetic services. Um, uh, and these are some advanced surveying that uh, sometimes even use uh, uh, redundancy of uh, of measurements to to increase the accuracy of the surveys so instead of for example looking at only survey from one mwd in the string you might look at uh, correlating it with the surveys coming from uh, from your rotary steerable system and then this redundancy would reduce the ellipse of uncertainty or as we mentioned what we call the um, uh, in-field referencing and other advanced surveying techniques that would reduce these uh, uncertainty uh, this definitely requires a very long session otherwise uh, for the anti-collision side. Okay, last question. Um, in your experience, what's more efficient in terms of transmitting energy, PDMS or turbines? Okay, so uh, yeah, so the comparison between uh, uh, PDMs or uh, positive displacement motors and uh, turbines, um, it really depends on the application, yeah? Um, normally turbines would uh, would deliver very very high rpms were very with very little torque and these are very suitable for very abrasive formations so if we are drilling very abrasive sandstones uh, in many cases you want to uh, you can be using turbines on impreg bits bits and these would give you the duration in the hole that you require doesn't necessarily give you rop because or rate of penetration but definitely it gives you um, a longer lifetime uh, but again, uh, ROP is not very uh, high, so eventually you might be ending up with, uh, with uh, some footage, uh, but with not high ROP. So these are normally the applications for the turbines. Turbines are mostly being used in, uh, with, uh, for the applications that require very high RPM, and these we have seen it mostly in the, um, in the abrasive sandstones. Uh, sometimes in, in salt as well has been used. Uh, but uh, for PDM, it delivers the torque requirement that you uh, that you want from uh, from drilling with a PDC bit. So if your application is a PDC drillable, definitely the best application for it would be uh, a PDM or a positive displacement motor, whether being a motor alone or a motor with a rotary server for reducing your uh, sliding interval or your directional or improving your direction control. Uh, but uh, four turbines uh, are mostly applications which, which require high RPM, like uh, sandstones and, uh, and the like. Perfect. Um, thank you so much for your presentation. It was great. Everyone in the chat box are uh, just over the moon. Uh, I would like to thank you again for, for joining us today and, and for your lecture. I would like also to thank uh, Dr. Ahmed Garhi for um, organizing this and engineer Maror Ott for sourcing this. So um, thanks all. Uh, just want to have uh, one thing for you. Uh, we have a lecture tomorrow. So if you're planning not to come in tomorrow, so we do have a lecture tomorrow. So just uh, stay tuned for that and uh, look into the Facebook group.
again, thank you so much, Engineer Ahmed. Thank you for SP Egypt and Pari Petro for this um, great platform and these, this great internship. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you all. Take the rest of the day off and see you tomorrow. Thank you.